Sam. What's up? What has the internet done to you? Why do you keep breaking the internet, huh? I, I, I have a problem saying no. We, we like, I know I can do something, and then my customers or people are like, can you do this? It's like, yeah, let's do it. And halfway through, it's like, what are we doing? Or how have I gotten here in my life? You know, last year we had a chance to shoot your V12 Pistachio FDR-X7. And I already thought that was crazy. But now you've built something that's honestly really close to my heart. This is something that I have always said should exist. Yeah. In terms of like the GT3 version of a Z4, you know? So I, I did have a chance to follow many of the teams when this was actively competing, yeah. right? In that era. Yeah. And I always thought, why is it that BMW never made a street going version of this vehicle? And so that's essentially what you've done. Well, this actually is a GT3 Z4. But you're actually gonna drive this on the street. Street legal, I mean, yeah. Florida street legal. But yeah, it's got AC power steering and all that stuff, so yeah. So how did this build begin? What's the story behind this build? So one of my customers, uh, we bought this car in uh, Lithuania, shipped it over actually from that guy. Um, as a rolling shell, like track beaten, like destroyed. And it was gonna be a beater car. We're gonna build M120 manual, just track car and just have fun with it. And then, Another project kind of fell through and we decided let's just do all the crazy stuff we're going to do to that one to this one because we had the shell, we had the motor and then it just slowly snowballed into uh, what you see now. So what's the history behind the chassis? Did it have any race wins or uh, like how many racing hours did it have before you got to it? We have no idea. I know we, we got a, a bunch of body work with it like it has been it's been through some shit for sure. So it raced in Europe quite a bit then. Definitely wasn't a spring chicken. Definitely wasn't fresh but then the question is how did you even get the body panels and stuff did it come with a lot of this stuff it, it did but everything has i don't even know how many thousands of hours of like just refitting the bodywork because obviously nothing fits right gt3 cars they smash stuff they get panel panel gaps don't matter so like completely rebuilt the whole thing try to get it as, as nice and clean and street car friendly as possible but yeah man it's uh yeah, the, the motor's like, the motor was the big thing. Right? right, so then let's talk about the motor. The This ran uh, the four liter BMW V8, but this is obviously a lot bigger than that. So then, so tell, tell us, is this similar to what you guys were working on last year? Very similar. So we've developed the M120 motor very, very heavily with a rods, pistons, heads, all the accessories. And this was kind of a good opportunity to add some boost to it and build more of a boost motor. And with doing some research, Mercedes back in 1939 had the W154, their race car. And it actually had a crank driven supercharged V12 in that car. So we thought it'd be really cool to have a late model Mercedes V12, do a late model Pro Charger, develop all the, the brackets to make it crank driven with all late model, you know, Haltech engine management and all that good stuff and kind of make a modern version of what they did. So like the car, obviously it's a BMW, but we got a lot of Mercedes power plant and we did the silver Mercedes, the Patronus green accents all over it. And obviously the emblem, the emblems like BMW Mercedes. I love that, that's so cool. So yeah, I try to piss off the Mercedes guys, try to piss off the BMW guys, just do something crazy. I don't know, you pissed off a lot of people, but you made people like me very happy, like real car guys, <laughs> to see something like this exist. So then, did you have to clearance anything to get this in here? Chassis-wise, not really. We, we rebuilt some of the top rails, but just for the, the clearance right here on the valve cover, that was really it. But yeah, it fits in the chassis very well. Obviously, the radiators moved to the back. But other than that, like we were pretty, pretty amazed at the fact that we could fit a V12 with the Pro Charger and all that stuff in this bay. And because this is all the original GT3 stuff, yeah. right? You didn't modify or change any of this stuff. This is how it came from the fact. Yeah, pretty much this tube's the only thing we changed as far as the chassis goes. Tell me about the crazy header work here. Yeah, so that's Celera Tech. There was uh, a whole lot of time in developing the headers and this motor, and the headers were a massive part of it. I mean. These are true six to one, equal length. Everyone says, yeah, equal length, but these are actually fully designed in CAD, uh, CNC cut, CNC fabricated. I mean, these are exactly equal length. We rifled the firing order per bank. We flow tested the heads, because obviously these are our massive CNC ported heads. So with the flow test data and the cam profiles, we developed the length, the primary diameter, like the collector angle, like the noise is what we're what we're shooting for. That's like the whole point of this, you know. So this runs and drives? We fired it. 
be fire. So last week before we got here, like the car's in a million pieces, Adam from Smart EFI came down to install the harness. We got the harness all on, primed the dry sump system, we got crank signal, we got cam signal. Uh, we, we turned it over, cranked it, fired, and they were like, we got two days to get this car together to SEMA. So it's ready. So we get back, we're gonna get it running before PRI. We just couldn't miss it. We couldn't miss coming here just trying to get it running, but it's yeah. it's right there. This this is insane too. I'm uh, like, did you guys make this yeah. in house? This fabricate all that, did the whole tube front end. I mean, it was all like I still got burn marks from like like three days ago. You're scarred for life from this yeah. thing. And it's uh, yeah, it was a long a long few weeks leading up to SEMA getting this together. I love it. I love it so much. So then, is this aftermarket then? That's the original one that we rebuilt, reskinned. Because it looks a lot prettier than it would have. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. like you said, these are super rough. Yeah, there was no structure to this. We had to fully rebuild the whole thing, take it all the way down. It's cool. The intake is just right in the front right here. Right there you go. It'll just suck in low flying birds or whatever. So dry sump set up. I also really liked the, because I've photographed this in endurance racing, um, I, I love that you guys kind of kept a little or, or added some lighting yeah. to kind of, I guess, uh, I wouldn't say pay tribute, but like uh, have a little bit of what it, the GT3 was like. Yeah, yeah that, that was the whole goal. Diodynamics make the, makes these pods and they're crazy bright. And of course the oil coolers are there, so we kind of added a little bit more venting on that. Oh, that's behind that? Yeah. Oh, so it's it's functional too. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Okay, so tell me about the suspension. Uh, we did hydraulic cups. We're probably gonna change it after the fact because it's another one of those things of GT3 car and suspension and geometry is way up here and we wanna go way down there. So yeah, it works, but when we start using this thing, we're gonna change it out, get some other coilovers built for it. So do the air jacks still work? Yeah, yeah. That's the one thing we gotta do the fire suppression when we get back and we gotta do the air jack plumbing and then yeah, it'll be- Fire suppression on the street. I mean, I'm I'm very OCD. Like every car we build is gonna have fire suppression. There's way too many videos, you know. Love that. Love that it's air jacks on a street car. Yeah. Tell me about the wheel combo here. Yeah, so these are these are 1552s, man. Uh, you know, we've been using 1552 for a while, and they stopped doing their forged wheels, and we hit them up, and they said, yeah, we want to start producing forged wheels again. So it was like, hey, let's go center lug, and you know, make some pretty badass wheels for because it. So. It, it, when it's racing, it has center lugs, mm -hmm. but obviously they're not meant for the street, but this they were able to build something for you just for this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the adapters are from Braid, and then they did the wheels, it's just, you know, GC3 fitment and everything, so. I love it. I love it. And then, so, these panels, are these all, what are, are they fiberglass or carbon? They're a mixture of both. <laughs> I mean, it's like a lot of the stuff was carbon, they fixed it, and then it's, yeah. So there's... God knows how much carbon and fiberglass in each of these panels, man. Let's check out the back. I just love, I've always loved the way these look and they just look so different from the street going version of this car. Yeah, totally. It just still doesn't make sense why BMW didn't make Z4 GT3 or whatever, I don't know what they would call it, a GTS street car. Yeah. Tell me about the wing. I always made a lot of stuff, man. BYC Designs helped me on that. He's a big aero guy over in the UK that's now in Florida with me. So we just designed something up and machined the in place, machined the uprights, welded all the brackets on, just got it all together. Wanted a proper dual element, proper width of the car, sitting in the right spot. So yeah, all the downforce we're gonna need for sure. So then you didn't have a chance to dyno this yet. What, what are you expecting power-wise? We don't have like a benchmark. The rods are rated for 1,800 horse. Um, we kind of spec'd everything out. It's gonna, it's gonna rub up to nine grand. I don't know, I mean, I'm hoping 1,500 is kind of like the goal. And then wh anything over 1,000 is gonna be dumb in this chassis. Like it's gonna, be, it's gonna be dumb. So we'll start at seven pounds and go from there, you know. But we're running a TurboSmart electric wastegate as a blow-off valve. So we've got boost control now with the supercharger. So we can do boost by gear and you know, we got traction control on it and a whole bunch of trick stuff. So we'll be able to dial it in to make it somewhat usable. Dude, that is gonna be so cool. See, the thing is, this is designed to run for 24 hours straight. For it to handle, but, but not that much power, right? I, I don't even know how much power they were making back then. They were very restricted, right? I think probably 500 if they're lucky. For you guys to be able to make three times the horsepower, I think that would just be so cool. 
I mean, and it's it's built for it too. We got an HDT sequential six speed in it. We got you know a tilt and twin disc clutch, which should be good. Yeah, let's talk about the interior. Can you open up that side? I just want to take a look at the interior here. So it's running on Haltech ECU? We've got a Haltech uh, Nexus R5 under the dash, and then we got a PD16 on the back because we got a lot of electronics in this car. My goodness. All business, but this is probably the cleanest BMW <laughs> GT3 car <laughs> with a full dash like that's all upholstered. So did you have to change much like did you have to fix any of the cage or anything on the inside just a little bit nothing too much but just um, mainly in the back and just clean it up some welds and some kind of subpar stuff but yeah it's uh for the most part it's all just how just how it came on the boat over to us could you tell if this had any big racing incidents or anything like that i it's hard to tell i i think so i mean everything measured square but yeah there are definitely some panels in the back quarters that looks like they've been repaired a couple times I mean, it had the side exhaust, so we had to cut all the floor out to fit a passenger seat back in it. It had a big endurance tank, so all, all this uh, was built out, so we cut all that stuff out. So then what kind of fuel tank does it have now? We got a radium, a uh, 14 gallon cell in the back. So we put the radium cell in the back, so it's got, you know, three pumps and all that fun stuff. I wish you could see it. It's like impossible to get that trunk off. Yeah, uh, and the dry sump tank is back here. Yeah. So then you still fill it through here then? Yeah. That's really neat. To have a car on the street with with a filler, like this, a quick fill like this. Well, that's cool, because the, the radium quick cell, you can unscrew it like a normal cap too, so you kind of get best of both worlds. Amazing, this is just all business. So I've had a chance to ride in one of, one of these um, around Sebring, mm -hmm. and just the, what it's capable of doing on the, on the track for that long. Is, is what is really impressive. You know, the braking performance and the G's that it can pull. This is gonna be the ultimate streetcar. It's gonna be fun, man. I'm sorry. It's gonna be so cool. So I'm, I'm pumped because we got the, the gear wine of the blower, we got the gear wine of the transfer drive for the blower, and then of course, whatever the motor sounds like, and then the gear wine of the, the, the HGT sequential. So it's like, there should be a whole lot of noises going on kind of all at once, you know? It's gonna be, it's gonna be fun. It's got AC too. Oh, really? Yeah, we got electric AC in it, so we got a full electric Because it's a Florida car? Yeah, Florida. Customer's like, yeah, I got to have something in there. It's like, yeah, this only goes you, gets you so far, you know. So are you actually going to try to run that steering wheel? Yeah, yeah. This is actually for um, uh, an Exo Boost that we built for my customer last year for SEMA, the guy that owns this car. So it kind of can go back and forth between the two. We want street car, more race car. Um, and then it's all through a Crontec hub, so everything's, you know, right on there. You even have a dome light? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, Dio Dynamics makes these rock lights, and we, we got one in the engine bay, and we got one in here for, for working on it and just being inside, so. So this is actually where the AC comes out? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, blower motor into the dash, and the compressor, everything else is in the back. The electric power steering in there, and like, yeah, it's uh Florida man. Amazing. So cool. Well, thank you for sh showing us this incredible build. You guys always bring the heat. It's a rough year, man. This is this is like an eighth month project, so I'm glad we made it. A lot of long hours, a lot of eight months. Some people wouldn't be able to do this in eight years. It was uh, it was a lot, man. Like three weeks ago, I was machining rod bearings for the motor. Like like it was it was a it was a long one, but yeah, we made it. I can't wait to hear this thing. I can't wait to hear a full song. Just going through the gears. PRI, we're supposed to be at PRI, so the goal is to get back, get it tuned, and get it running for that, and then uh, get back on my RX-7 after that. Because mine got completely put on hold. It's like, we got to focus on this, so getting both running here pretty soon. It's going to be great. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift, or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.